Hello. Well, if you are wondering what books you can read in 2024, I definitely have some suggestions for you. So, if you want to stick around to the end of this video, I do have one that is rare, but you can get your hands on it, and it's not banned. I was asked just the other day if I had banned books. Sadly, I don't, as a book collector. Um, not professional, I'm not selling yet, but I would love to. The idea is simple. In 2024, I want to be reading more books, and it's likely that you want to read more books as well. So I have some ideas for books that you can read in order to, I don't know, whatever you want to do with those books. I have books on my shelf, many that I can look at right now, as well as some in my um, other uh, display case, and I can do a showcase of that another day, but I will set them out and show you individually so that you can get an idea of what where I'm at with that. Here's my cat. He says hi momentarily. He's just saying hi and I'm going to show you some books. He might hop on my lap. Uh, that's fine. He's just being a cute cat. All right, so this book, Permission to Feel by Mark Brackett, PhD. It's a uh, the director at Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence power of emotional intelligence to achieve well-being and success. Now, while the title itself sounds kind of, well, relating to, well, obviously, mental health um, and emotional intelligence, it, it, it reminds me of, if you were told to not have permission to feel, it's a reminder that you can have feelings. So, I do believe it's a great message, but personally, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I do appreciate the contents of the book. I haven't gone through the entire book, but I have read some and I've noted. I note all my pages and books, as you can see. I'm very uh, prolific in writing and note-taking on pages. Uh, there are some where, uh, on my shelf where I've just, all of, all of the pages have notes. So I do feel like this is a good uh, starting book for 2024 and I may try to finish it in by 2025, but since I have so many books, I'm not guaranteed to get to it. Obviously, this one is a uh, guarantee. Now, I know people say don't, you know, look up to your idols very much, and I'm, I'm sure that everybody has their, their issues. Robert Greene seems like a pretty decent person. Uh, sometimes he can get um, I guess upset or gnarly in some ways, but that's just a consequence of who he deals with and I mean I can't blame him because uh, People are in well human nature uh, as a whole tend to have this uh, Situation Robert Greene great book. You can see some wear and tear on these pages I've used it quite a bit penguin books really nice Laws of human nature very nice cover. I dated it and I believe, yeah, also noting down, I did get quite far in here. I, I think I'm at one of these somewhere around here. Um, but yes, I note take quite a bit in my pages. I'm trying to find here. Yeah, this is a good example. Um, you can see uh, grief is one or to maintain united in the face of danger. So, I do appreciate this book, though I have not finished it. I have finished um, Carl Sagan, The Demon Haunted World, and I will get to that in one moment. Now, I have finished school books when they told you to read them, but I myself have not finished 99% um, of my books. So, the only book that I fully recall reading myself is Carl Sagan, The Demon Haunted World. The reason was I was as I was inspired to change by depression early on. Um, 15, 16, 17 age range and had some challenges, but that comes as a consequence of being young and obviously the troubles of the world. So uh, getting through it was uh, pretty, pretty nice. I really like the details and the sort of mysticism of the whole book. 
Though I don't obviously recall the entire thing, I must say that um, I did actually read the entire book. Uh, I think it's a great book, and coupled with the, the time frame, it is just one of my favorite, and I will get to the rest. So, if you like more science-y topics, I do have a couple here. This one is an old one, 2004, I believe. I'm trying to level my camera right. Um, classical and Quantum Information, which is a, uh, a textbook, Academic Press AP textbook, uh, Fourth Dimension by uh, Rudy Rucker. Um, it is signed, but by his friend, so not him. Uh, this is just a note-taking thing. This is one of my mom's books that she gave me. Um, I bought this, this, this was given to me. Uh, I've never read Turing's Cathedral, but I am going to give this one to a friend eventually. Uh, Jim Bagot, Quantum Space is a fascinating book. Uh, as far as I'm reading, I obviously, you can see I'm not fully done with it yet. Uh, this is a sticker from Colors by Sue on Instagram. She's an amazing artist. I would definitely check her out. And um, I haven't finished any of these books. I've, I've definitely just skimmed this one the most, just for uh, math help and practice. And then over here, um, the, this is the one that I was recommending, as well as this one too. Uh, Battle for Your Brain. This one is going to be an absolute guarantee have to read in 2024. Battle for Your Brain, Deepening the Right to Think Freely in the Age of Neurotechnology. And the start, obviously signed, I signed it, um, is great. It talks about the, I guess, the, ch the changing tides of uh, the world. Uh, tracking the brain, I haven't gotten to this point yet because I'm impatient with myself and I can never absolutely guarantee that I will read a book. It's not because I don't like the book, it's just me. So I really think you should read these books I recommend, but personally, I just have a problem with actually getting to reading them. I do collect rare books, so I don't expect you or anybody here to or rather uncommon books. I don't know if they're rare or not. Um, to, I don't expect people to necessarily uh, collect those, but there are two that I have that are quite expensive, and one of them is signed, not by the author, but a, by, by a different author who goes by a related pen name. I have here quite a nice book. It's Ayn Rand, The Virtue of Selfishness, first edition, first printing. And I'm happy to own this because I found out that Ayn Rand is a really respected and beautiful cover. It's intact, and um, it only says seven ninety five on the on the uh, on the dust jacket, but it goes for nine hundred or so. It's a nice book. It's the first you can check on. Uh, the web, you can find this image for the first printing, and uh, it has a uh, it has a dusty smell, uh, not necessarily moldy, but I'm happy that it's in good condition, and I have I've read it. Next, I have one that's in less of a good condition because the dust jacket isn't wrapped in plastic. It is. Lawrence Kohlberg, Essays on Moral Development, The Philosophy of Moral Development, and Volume 1, too. So, uh, this one has a woody, uh, fragrance smell, and is like a vanilla, very, very amazing smell. I can't describe it to you. Uh, if you know books, and if you're one of those people who likes to smell the books, this one is one of those where... It just, it's not only not moldy, for one, but it's preserved well enough so that you could imagine it like a coffee shop. 
It is equivalent in the sense of a really good coffee smell in a coffee shop. And I appreciate that about the book. Now, who signed this? Not the author. It was Joanne uh, Greenberg. Uh, it's listed as Joanne B. Green on here. November 1981, so when the book came out. I don't know if they knew each other, but I did connect the two people, pen names, and figured out that it's Joanne Greenberg who worked on uh, mental health and wrote the book um, I Never Pro Promised You a Rose Garden. She noted here a few things, uh, three things, correct, correction, and uh, the book is numbered. I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's a library. Oops. I'm sure that's a library note uh, and not referring to the number of the book printing. It could be, but I think it was in a library. Now, the pages are intact and uh, fluttery and just this whole thing uh, is is nice. The, the cover is nice. The binding is nice. Uh, the cover doesn't have to be too fancy for me but it's one of those, please, what are you doing? It's one of those where I really appreciate um, that I have it in the first place. So, oh my God, some crazy cats. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you do have enough money to buy it, that's great, but I didn't even need to pay a cent for these. I found them, which is amazing. No, I didn't steal them, <laughs> but I, I love collecting books. These are some of the ones that I have, or the related topic, science old books, and I do have old novels and uh, things like that, so, uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this book showcase. This one is not a old book, an old book. It's about Nikola Tesla, but it, it's a Canterbury classic. But it doesn't, it's not real. It's, it's just, it's just for decoration. Which is one of the reasons why I don't really appreciate this compared to type ones like these and so on and so forth. But I do have a knack for collecting books, and these are some of the books that I have. Uh, if you want to read, just go back to a timestamp in this video to see which one you want to, you know, check out and look around. Um, this one I don't really recommend because. It's hard. Oops, this thing is not working. Oh my god, this weird camera. What? Why is it so bugging me? Anyways, um, this one I don't really recommend because it's very hard for me to get through. There's a lot in it to digest, and it takes a lot to. Uh, it look, takes a lot of attention to process the thoughts of it. And hello, kitty. How are you doing? Um, and yeah. So thanks. Oh my god, you stupid cat. Anyways, thank you, and hope you have a good day. Bye.